I am, uh, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to try this. So uh, this is, uh, this is very interesting because basically this is something I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. Uh, so uh, Alexandra uh, Shikara uh, and I started a project called TypeScript uh, Perf, TS Perf, uh, and started exploring exactly this uh, VS Code plugin for TypeScript to focus on performance. Um, but one thing and another basically came up, maintenance of Nuxt uh, for me, uh, and basically haven't got a chance to, uh, to implement this. But now, Algora is sponsoring a uh, Unkey, Scalar, and uh, Tigris are sponsoring a challenge. So I'm gonna do this best as I can. I've not got a huge amount of time today and then uh, heading to the US, but I'll see what I can do and hopefully get something nice and open sourced coming out from it. Mm. Okay, here we go. So um, let me just see if I can actually, oops. Let's see if I can actually just confirm whether the chat is, uh, is working. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, if anyone is here, by the way, let me know. Normally I stream on Twitch and so uh, I can see if folk are around, but uh, I think the only way is if you, you sort of say something in the chat and then I'll know. Okay, so this is the objective. We want to, we want to be able to show a, the complexity time to load of a type in TypeScript. Um, now, I'm not an expert in creating VS Code extensions. Uh, so, so this is basically as far as, as I've got. I've copied some code I, I, I built for another extension, uh, getting going with Nuxt. And uh, hopefully I'll just push up this Nuxt VS Code template for anyone else who wants to do something similar. It's not, it's not, it's not working yet. Okay, so uh, this is a template for starting with VS Code. with uh, Nuxt. And let's see, we probably want to, um, probably want to, uh, you'll need to replace with your VS Code pusher. Uh, replace with your VS Code extension. Okay. And let's just commit this. I'm going to start as far as I can do with actually getting an extension working uh, with Nuxt and VS Code. So I've got uh, in here a little uh, UI dev. Let's see if that works. Hopefully I should be able to open that in my browser. Next, welcome, beautiful. And if I change that and do something like, uh, hello, there we go. Excellent, seems to be working. Um, and I should also be able to use like a VS Code badge and button and checkbox and stuff. So if I say VS Code button, Hello. Hopefully, that's going to work. No, we, we basically have a, um, I'm trying to register this in my plugins. There's a VS Code UI, which is pretty cool. So it should allow me to, I want to register the VS Code button like this. Uh, I wonder if I have to import it. work. What's the example? VS Code UI. Oops, VS Code UI, JavaScript. Do this. So this is what I want to use and it should allow me to build an extension that looks a little bit like that. Uh, so let's see, how do we get going with it? Should be able to do something like this. We want to 
want to have a VS Code button. Maybe in panels. No, I don't think so. Maybe hmm, not a great example, perhaps. Oh, let's try the U, view one. Okay, so we have a web view UI and it has source. And we want to be able to, yeah, we have to do this, provide VS Code design system. Uh, and then, ah, oh, there's that example. Okay, let's just try it like this. Oh, I think it's maybe the... Yes, okay. So we've got a VS Code um, design system coming in. Uh, that's a button and it looks like it belongs in VS Code. So, we, and we don't need to, to import it. We are correctly registering it in here. And we should just be able to say something here like, oh, I'll put Max Falcon back for the template. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Let's pub before I get too much uh, down the line, let's publish this. Um, I think there's probably a problem with it, but uh, let's publish it to GitHub. Copy that out there. Cool, let's just check it's there. What did I call it? Max VS Code template. Cool. Okay, so that is a thing now that hopefully exists. Um, if anyone wants to check it out. I'm not sure it works yet. Let's see. So um, when you're developing a VS Code, I think we want to be able to do, uh, we want to be able for a start to, I guess we have to build the UI. Okay, let's try that. Okay, and then we want to be able to uh, debug the extension. And I think we do that basically by opening the start debugging tool. Uh, this dev task uh, watches the watches the extension and opens it. And this should allow me to do something like, do I need to give my extension a name maybe? Let's see. Need to give a name to the extension, perhaps. So we have our extension here, it has a display name. X slug, I've called it. And it needs to have a main, which exists there, good. Uh, it contributes a command and that's a good example of it. And I think we've done exactly that. So we have a command here, open web view, uh, title, and I'm calling it publisher preview. And then we register that in our activation thing. So this interestingly doesn't have an activation event. So let's drop that and try that again. My camera went dark. My, um, and nice to see you, Jonas. Uh, let's see if I can magically get myself to reappear. My camera sometimes turns itself off uh, crazily. Mm. When it overheats, I think. Anyway, we're back and hopefully we'll stay back. So let's see, we need to open. So in my, index.ts register command publishers love plug preview let's see what's going on here we should have an output extension host and 
text. There's lots of stuff here. To do highlight, let's get rid of that. Excellent. Glad we're back. Um, what else do I want to see? I want to see, ideally I want to see my extension. <laughs> so uh, if you were expecting this to just immediately start working, that would be a very nice thing. What is it? What do I call it? Publish. Right now, I want to figure out why my extension isn't being loaded in the playground here. So Okay, I have some a debugging step. I've just cobbled this together this morning from. Okay, so we're watching. We want to load this. We want to open our playground. Ah, that's all fine. And we want to pass the extension development path to our workspace folder. Should be right. So we have our file. Let's try this again. is good. Okay, what's the issue here? It cannot be tracked. Okay, we're continuing anyway. So I basically want to see why it's not running. So we have a debug console here. Buffer. Am I using that anywhere? Sorry if any. Okay, node path. Maybe that's the issue. Could try and putting some pathway. Which is a non node dependency, but which implements the path API. Let's check that again. Okay, that seems fine, right? Does that change our debugging? Okay, let's restart and start this again. Now I want to see, are we still having this? I think it's probably not coming from us. Okay, so I'm registering this web view panel and it is pulling in this HTML from UI dist. Two hundred HTML. Okay, I'm falling back on my old ways of dot env it's complaining dot env let's get rid of you as an extension I, I, like, is global this even accessible in uh, yeah of course it is so, but we're obviously we haven't been loaded we haven't loaded 
So, okay, why is activate not running is my question. So we have activate, that should run. Uh, we are obviously not registering the extension in some kind of way. So this is our command, this is our main. We need to figure out what this example is doing differently. Okay, so we have our extensions, our launch, settings, tasks. I think it's worth updating those in a second. But I want to know why. I have my extension, it registers a command and pushes the command to the extension. Let's try a much simpler one, okay? Let's just try something more like this. So we have, that. I, I mean, although it, it's not even running the activate, so why would it, it run the activate? We have, it's all, it should all be specified here, right? And it should just register it. I'm so confused. Okay. I should just register it. Okay, let, let me let me have a look at, at our, my launch thing. Okay, so launch, what's different? We have our extension host, launch, exec, uh, runtime executable. Let's update these. So, and we will call this old. And we'll just paste our new one in and update it. Drop the test for the moment. Okay, run extension, extension host, launch, workspace folder. Uh, okay, it doesn't look like we are passing the playground thing. Although I guess we could, right? We have dist, I guess, is what we're paying attention to. And the pre-launch task will be Let's see, default build task. Okay, so and then we can we can configure that. So our default build task is going to be defined in our tasks JSON, uh, and it's going to be this thing. So we'll create. We'll just confirm that this exists. So this has npm is background reveal never. We can drop the problem matcher, I guess for the moment, uh, and then that seems good. Okay, let's try that one more time. So start debugging, that should work, hopefully. Uh, let's just try one more time. Uh, and just remove the, the launch. Okay, it's opened. Hmm. Seems good, right? Curious why it's still opening in playground. Okay, so what we want. So it's just like I wonder if there's some issue with with the uh, the slug that I've chosen here. So if we just say um, publisher, and then describe this as uh, extension and I guess we can drop this. Okay. 
okay. So we have publisher preview, and then that's the command we need to register. So we're going to register publisher preview, uh, prepare web view. Let's just ignore that. We just want to register the command and make sure that that displays something. So it should say, um, my custom command will change it to. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Start debugging. Just make sure that we are, yeah, delete that. Try it one more time. We want to run extension. Debug anyway. Goodness me, I feel so bad about this. Okay, so what is it? Why is this not? Why is it not showing? Like if anybody knows knows the answer to this, tell me. What is the, the problem? Okay, so the example seems, I seem to be doing exactly the same thing that Okay, let's just update our tasks. So we have uh, NPM and I think they have the example of problem matcher being, I think we'll, we'll use this. So I think this is what Anthony uses. Uh, let's see. Oh, and it should be roll up and then it should be yeah, waiting for changes. That should be fine. That should be a, the pattern. So let's see if that works again. Huh. Is the issue the fact that it's underlined somehow? remove the begins pattern and see if that makes a difference. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. This is a VS, exactly, that is what it is, Regora, that is precisely what it is, except that right now this is just a VS Code extension to, uh, to actually, I just wanna make a VS Code extension start. Um, and right now I'm having trouble registering anything. So I have, um, so we have an example of a VS Code extension here, which has this file, out extension. And right now we have, a package JSON which points to dist index.js, which I feel should also work, right? Oh, no, it is, it is there. Uh, and basically this is an incredibly simple thing. I just want to, to register a command. Um, and like, I mean, let's actually just copy exactly the command that they have and see whether we can make that work. So there's the command and here's the, the name of the extension. So we're just going to, Maybe it's the publisher thing. Drop that and put the extension name up there. Uh, okay, so we're gonna just trial this. And basically I feel that this should, okay, this is the command now. So I'm gonna register that command here. And that should be the example code here. So the extension does this. It 
does that. And we have this activate function. Okay, so this is the thing that it does uh, and it's importing commands from VS Code. So I guess we can do that too, just to make it the same. Uh, except I'm not going to bother with that. We're not going to even bother importing from there. We're just directly going to run their code, like the basic code. And we're going to remove the deactivate function. So this, I want, I want a, I want this hello world view show. That's what I want to run. So if I, uh, I'm just going to reload the window, and I'm going to run the uh, the debugging command. Okay, so we've opened our playground, and I want to be able to run that. So should be hello world and it's not showing anything. So I wonder if there's an issue maybe with the examples, like are these outdated seven months ago? Do they need to be, okay, Anthony who is code extension. He has lots, I think. So he has got like what, uh, I ate in an ally, is that one? Let's see if we can see what they do. So they have hopefully a package JSON, publisher and name and version and display name. They have their main, uh, dependencies, yes, categories. Okay, activation events. I wonder if that's what it is. We're basically just not activating it. Let's add our an activating event and say, this feels like a lot of options. So uh, that's fine, right? That will that will trigger. Drop those, we don't care about those. Let's see if this makes a difference. I don't feel optimistic about this. So we should have a hello world extension example. No? Okay, so it needs to contribute a command. There's some various commands. Goodness. Lots of commands. We have some views. Yeah, this is um, I eat an ally, which is great. Um, it's a great extension, which helps you, um, like it basically shows you some localized values when you're just looking at the, uh, like what might be a, a dot uh, access property. So let's see if they have a screenshot. So exactly. So you can toggle through what the actual value of that intro is. Uh, by picking a different different language down there. It's great, uh, check it out. It was built, I think, originally by Anthony. Uh, now it's in localized, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's now maintained by somebody else. But for goodness sake, I'm just trying to figure out how to get VS Code to properly debug this extension. <laughs> right. So <laughs> right. So we have our our um our tasks, which is we have a launch path, which basically we look to launch this uh with this extension development path. feels right, right? Okay, I'm just gonna close it and reopen it again. Okay, and I'm going to again start debugging, which should, in the background, do this. The matcher isn't working. Maybe, maybe it's something to do with the matcher, right? Uh,
And the problem with the, the matcher for me uh, is that it, it basically looks at the build command and tries to see, is it done? Uh, what's our build command here? Webpack. I'm sure, I'm sure Anthony's built some stuff that's not Webpack. Uh, how recent is this? Last year. That might just work. So, um, Are we using Let's see roll up roll up plugin ES build? No. It might work. It might work because um, I, I'm not really interested in the problems. I just actually want it to know that it's built. So uh, let's see. Our dev command is roll up C W. Oh, which is fine. That's our dev command. And we need to, we can try this. Roll up TS watch. And just paste it in there. This should be ah. Let's try that. And we need to probably to install roll up problem. Roll up. doesn't work. It shouldn't matter. I mean, this is just meant to show the problems. It's not meant to actually somehow. Okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, and I'll actually open the file because it that is listed as a as an activation event. Okay, so we have loaded three more on language TypeScript. And we now do not have Hello World, but that activation event is is happening. So we have got this on language TypeScript event running. It feels somehow like the it's not properly Properly registering the the actual extension that I'm like it, it, it feels like a very basic issue with which should should okay let if if it's that basic let's just check again so they have extensions which includes this extension maybe now that's a recommendation and they do have this TSL problem matcher which we can have a look at in a moment. But they have launch, which does what? Exec path args 
workspace folder, out files, pre-launch task. I can I can update the the glob, but I don't think that's going to change it. And they have if I have a look at I feel I need to get Anthony here. He needs to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so we have Okay, maybe we just add a recommendation. Okay, so we have now oh, I have the problem matcher. We have um, hello world view, right? And our publisher is publisher. So it should be publisher hello world view. That should be enough to recommend it, right? Omar, you're here, hello. It's not going well, I don't know. There is no goat in the building, I'll tell you that. So basically, <laughs> but I would be content right now if I actually managed VS Code, for goodness sake, to actually load my extension, it's that bad. Okay, so <laughs> enable extent, maybe is there a way I can enable an extension? Uh-huh. Extensions, workspace. I somehow want to see, okay, maybe this. Is there anything that I am not, is there a reason I'm not able to run my own extension that I am testing or trying to test? For goodness sake, so why? Okay, what are my other options? I want to see stuff that is recently published. Uh, okay, I want to see, for goodness sake. Yeah, um, if, if anyone, if anyone um, <laughs> has a solution to this. Right, so. Well, let's just figure, uh, let's do some classic Google searching. So VS Code extension not loading in debug mode. Uh, yeah. Okay, the minimum version of VS Code. Aha, uh -huh. let's just have a quick look at that. VS Code version. Uh, oh, that's probably, there might be another option there. Okay, code, B settings, right? Uh, version. Uh, okay, so I did, I did do this. Maybe that could be my problem. Uh, let's pop open the package JSON and we have a minimum version of 8.9, let's just say 7.0. That would be so annoying if that's it. Yes, for goodness sake, for goodness sake. So apparently this is the issue. So if we have, oh, so much time lost to this. If you have a, uh, a VS Code engine, which is up to date in your, in your package JSON, it doesn't show you any error. It doesn't show you any, um, any issue. It just doesn't load. <sighs> oh, so bad. Okay, let's, let's get rid of this and make sure things still work. Um, so we, we have dropped that. Let's revert back to uh, open, uh, sample web view. We're going to call it publishers like preview. We're going to go back to here and register it 
there. So Omar, yes, uh, this, the idea is, um, I'm the idea is I'm creating a template for using Nuxt uh, with VS Code. That's the, that is the concept uh, here. Um, so star as VS Code from VS Code. Okay. And then we're basically going to prepare web view. This is everything that I had got before. That seems like a reasonable change. This seems like we can drop this. We can uh, add this back and let's just check if that and hello world view is going to be called x slug. There we go. And extension will be called x slug. There we go. Let's see if that works again. So start debugging. Reload it. And this should be now web view, open sample web view. Beautiful. That's great. And publisher slug preview isn't found. That's probably because I didn't update it. Beautiful. Try one more time. Top of the morning, uh, Henry, or oh, Enrique. It is, it is Enrique, right? That is your, uh, oh, right. We're wanting to say open sample web view, boom. And okay, it's working. This is great. So this is what we want. This is like, this is the, this is the aim. Uh, so now that I have fixed those issues, I'm going to push it up back to, uh, back to the Git repo and then other people won't face the issue that I have just uh, experienced, which was extremely painful. Uh, okay, so fix, ensure, oh, and we probably want publisher to go back to publisher slug. Great. And just checking. And this was what? Beautiful. Fix. Uh, remove too high VS code engine. Push. Now, if you're wanting to um, follow along with the uh, the changes, uh, they are up here in Daniel Rowe Nuxt VS code template. So um, this hopefully should start help somebody else to get started with uh, Nuxt and VS code. And um, Homepage incorrect, you say? What do you mean it's incorrect? Oh, the idea is that people um, search and replace in the um, in the, the repo. So I've I've told them that they'll need to replace publisher slug and x slug uh, to get going. Oh, okay, for goodness sake. So now we can actually get started, I hope, with um, what we want to do. Um, and maybe the, the web view thing isn't isn't that crucial, um, even for the extension that we're looking to build. Um, so let's see, what is it that we actually want to do? Um, right, so let's um, de-get this um, and make this into a, uh, uh, another PR. So, uh, next VS code template, and we'll call this what we want to call this. The concept is um, TSPerf. Now, I'll build this separately, but ultimately, this will probably go to uh, TSPerf itself um, because I, I should say that that um, this is will be building on work already done by uh, Alexandra Chikara, who I already mentioned, uh, and me. Um, so. It's not starting from, from total zero and uh, definitely Alexandra deserves credit on this as well. Um, but for now, we will copy this to, um, we will call this uh, type complexity extension and get going with that. Well, 
copying node modules is definitely a complex experience. Okay, so type complexity extension. And right, so this now should be uh, what we want to do. Right, so now here's the bit where I have to think about what we want to achieve. Um, the What we want to achieve is to get an idea of type complexity in code. Now I'm pretty sure that definitely typed had some tests which asserted performance. in CI somehow. Uh, performance test CI. Okay, this. Okay, so basically we had something called get completions at position. At some point in the past. Okay, so we need to, to um, I'm just gonna clone, <laughs> this will be painful, but I'm gonna clone definitely typed. Now there's a git command, um, git command search history function name. And basically what I'm looking for is this get completions at, get quick info at position. I mean, alternatively, it would probably be easier if I just knew the answer here. Um, okay, that's extremely straightforward. But the cloning of this enormous repo is likely to take a little while. You're probably good. It probably could. But it'll take a little bit to download. In the meantime, I want to know how to add like an overlay. Because actually, although I created this thing for to max web view, it's probably not a web view that we want. We probably want to show this in an overlay. So we want to do something like um, show overlay. Um, and we want to inline. So VS Code has some documentation on all of this. Um, and we want to be able to, one, figure out the because I'm not often doing TypeScript, uh, ex uh, I'm not doing extensions. So I need to understand a little bit about how we can display things. So we want to, okay, we have some output channels, a progress API, a file picker, show informational message, warning message, and probably warning message is what we want. Uh, well, we, we might want to do some, some of them, but let's just see how we would do that. Decorations, okay. Uh, we'll search for um, show decorations extension or decorations API.
once we find the like the the way of, of actually doing these things we, we might also auto complete with some other things that we might be able to do because so we basically have these let's see like uh show error message okay so if we did vs code commands uh no vs code window show error message okay that's what we would want we would also be able to do decorations okay vs code rocks decorations thank you are we downloaded yet not yet okay uh decorations yes yes thank you what's the api oh good we have some example okay create text editor decoration so we do Cool. So we have a type and uh, we just say what it is. Okay. Amazing. And we want to be able to style it. Okay, there's lots of styling. And we basically get access to, to it like this. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, we're going to call this performance log or something. And we would do Oh, interesting. Okay, so we have editor set decorations. So basically, what we would be able to do, I'm just going to grab this code. Okay, So we have Decorate. Oh, we, I see. We needs to be in line with the registration of the decoration, and so we would basically add a dec <laughs> decoration for the, the file. This is fine. Okay, and let's just give the example of the um, the hook. So it would be something like that. And this is basically if there's a console log, I guess it's going to decorate it. Nice. Okay. So if we debug that, it should do something. One sec. It's going to load. And we are typing console log high. Oh, interesting. Oh, it's before saving. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Press save. Well, that's the that's the that might be what it, the problem is, right? Because it's auto saving at the moment. So save, but it might not be auto saving. Let's let's add another another hook. We'll say on uh, edit or on did rename files. No. On uh, interesting.
I wonder if the issue here is that we are registering a command that we have not yet, that is, is no longer registered in the, let's try adding it back. It might be this is the problem. So we should now be able to change it. Let's reload the extension just in case. What was all of that error? Something else. Just check our thing is registered. It's not registered, for goodness sake. Why not? Why not? Okay. <laughs> what is our type complexity extension? <laughs> this is crazy. So uh, why isn't it registered? So we have a uh, publisher slug. Pre oh, it's uh, it's different now. It's uh, what is that? Open sample web view. No, no. Okay, it is registered. So console log hi. I think it, it it's probably an issue with the code that's that's being being read like it must be called, right? I get that this might not be calling, but surely editor document URI and event document URI, this should be the, this should, we should be able to get the editor that way. And I think the activate function is being called because we do have this um, open sample web view. So if I, um, so the web view here, this is what opens it. So it has to be registered in order to do anything. And so if we run the command, it does open the web view for us. So that the activate function is running. That's Quokka and what's this? Git lens. So there's there's some issues with some other other extensions, but uh, I think I think this is being registered. Okay, let's uh, let's go into definitely typed and do our search for um, something. What was that? Get quick info at position. Okay, what's going on? We have get log, right? It's going to take a while, I guess. Okay, so while that's happening, okay, we yeah we have to look at the content security policy. 
later, but why is the, uh, why is, well, so one, um, let's just check that we are logging here like in the uh, extension activated and just This should log. Oh, if we're gonna say, okay, get lens, let's get rid of you. And let's just check that this is in fact Okay, get lens, deactivate please. And what else is throwing this very large error? We have also, it's all get lens. Let's see if I can filter by equals, or what am I calling it, publisher? Let's just restart this thing and we want to confirm that this thing is actually running. So run extension. Okay, it's not appearing there is, is what it's not. Is it appearing in the debug console here? No. We know it's running. So I just want to figure out why I'm not seeing it. I see we have two of them. Is there something else I should be looking at here? So I've got a range of extensions, shared, event not found on did change. And that is coming from VS Code itself. Okay, so that's not that helpful. Uh, except, oh, maybe the problem is that rollup uh, roll problem matcher is, which I installed, is obviously not, is misbehaving. So uh, we're going to uninstall that. Uh, what else do we have? We have hmm, maybe it's not. Okay, it's not shared. Is it? window.
I've got to say, I would not be able to cope with this. Like that amount of logs and warnings, like this would very, very much drive me up the wall. I would want zero, zero warnings. Okay, extension host and uh, window. And if we open index.ts, registers nothing. Okay, let's um, let's get logging working, right? So um, we should be able to 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 use the VS Code API to register to show logs um, to different uh, different places, uh, and I'm sure I saw something about that. There's an output channel, right? So window create output channel. We're going to use this. So let's pop into here and say uh, um, VS Code window dot create output channel. Um, and we're going to say uh, type complexity and that should be fine, right? So we should be able to say um, that and maybe we could even do output channel dot append. Haha, beautiful. This will be very nice if this works. Okay. Right. And then we could also try uh, document changed. And hopefully we would have an output channel called type complexity. Try it again. Interesting. Create output channel. Ah, what's the log output channel? And we append. Hmm. It looks like we can append and show. Uh, but let's definitely make it a log output channel. I don't exactly know what that does. Let's see. Cool. Um, and we'll say output channel dot show. And we'll also do the same, I guess, here. Give it a try. Okay, let's see. Um, Uno CSS does this, so let's find out how. So we have Uno CSS, VS Code extension, and let's open that and see what it does. Okay, we have a lot of things. Okay, so let's see. First, it's package.json. It has got a publisher, display name, engines, activation events, which you might as well stick into ours, right? Uh, and it also has a configuration. We can ha have that later. This is all good. It's, we should have checked this 
before because this is probably exactly what I want. Okay, it has a index and it has log from here, window create put output channel. It's exactly what we do, except they they specifically append line. Okay, maybe that's the thing. Maybe okay, let's try that append line okay uh, and type complexity I'm going to remove that again try one more time Yeah, we're, we're, I'm already using it and it's not it's not displaying anything. So what I'm wondering is uh, reload extension post. Do I somehow need to restart? Because I'm registering something called type complexity. It's not appearing here. Uno CSS, of course, is beautifully. So why isn't mine? So I'm going to delete all of this, show that I am, and then run uh, sort of start debugging again. So again, that's going to start my task, build, open VS Code. Aha, it's working now. Not sure why that didn't work. We're getting lots of document changes, in fact, <laughs> because we, we, we run the show command after every log, it's never going to let me uh, uh, like get focus back. So let's change that. Do we get hot reloading? Aha! Everything just getting, maybe it's, it's not properly restarting VS Code. Um, maybe I somehow need to... Um, in the development workflow, maybe that's it. Maybe I'm. <laughs> maybe maybe there's a problem there. Anyway, it's working. It's working. Everything's doing doing good stuff, uh, except this is firing too much stuff. Uh, and I guess I'm still running that show command, even though I've removed it. That is, I think that is the that is part of the problem that we basically we have this. Okay, it's, it's now showing it all, right? This is awful. Okay, so we probably don't want to do that every single time, uh, and we know it's working now, um, but is the issue the sort of the hot reloading? It's the problem is basically the the um. The, the configuration of the debugger. So let's see if again we can figure out what uh, Anthony is doing. So he has the folder, he has the files, the pre-launch task. Fine. How does his, he uses this. TS Web Pack Watch. Build, start, build success. Okay, maybe that's better. Uh, and he must have a different builder. So what is his build? TS up. I need, I think I need roll up, but the the thing is this problem matcher, right? That is the, the thing that is, is tr giving me my, my problem. So my problem watcher, it needs to have a pattern, I guess. Mm. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the problem is it doesn't, it should say like next. And that's when it finishes. Let's try this one more time. Delete that. It can't be converted into a problem matcher. Okay, what is that? Okay, 
we want to have a problem matcher. I think might just be able to get rid of it. Okay. Uh, okay, it's it's activated, and I think we can actually start coding a bit more now. But I need another cup of tea, uh, so no, nobody leave. I'm going to go for five minutes and get a cup of tea, and I'll be back in a second. See you very soon. There's going to be a lot to remove from here.
I promise, I promise we're eventually going to get to a point where this starts looking nice and not just terrible. Okay. Oops, looks like we need to update chat. Is that working? Anyone in this new chat? <laughs> ah, right. So. Okay. So where are we? We have to grab this as well. And all of this about max hold space size probably is, is much more relevant for 9060. Thank you for, I feel like this is a, this is a moving target. Thank you for coming in. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're back. We're back. Okay. Um, Sorry about it, everyone. Um, I'm sure this is something that will be, will be resolved in future. So we are basically just copying code at the moment. Fork, cool. We can import all of that as well. We've currently got XX sync. This is now all uh, like just type errors, which we can can also resolve. Um, and let's see, where we need a worker file. And where is this coming from? This is oh, this is just basically this. Although that might not work in VS Code, so we can just do file name again. Uh, processes should be. It's coming in from our, our updated one, so we can do, I don't know, three. Uh, fail and errors is false, uh, like let's not recover. And a soft timeout is, I don't know, 10 seconds. And that all seems fine. Let's just drop that. And okay, that should be something that should run and I guess we could, we could, we could do that. Okay. And so we can also, oh yes, we do need this. Like we need to add the measurement, right? Uh, and so we need to, uh, that seems good. We can also just log this and okay. We will just do that. Okay. And let's uh, log the measurement. See if anything happens, right? Reload. Yes, there's logging happening. There's stuff happening. This is amazing. That's what we wanted. Like, look at all of this. Uh, this is the matrix inputs got a past command line and we've got some failed measurements. Okay, so why are they failing? So that's the directory, that's the file name, and we're starting at different bits of the, the file. We've got our tsconfig file. I am happy as a clam. So we are handling this crash. Why is the crash happening? So, Okay, 
So we're meant to be running this. We're running exec. No. Okay. Uh, run in. Okay, we're running this thing. And. Oh. That's probably why. So um, worker file. I see. So we need to basically have this file uh, should be giving us some stuff. So it should be exporting. Yes, okay, okay, okay. So it, it runs this if it started as a forked process. So basically we need to have a little A little that so okay we're testing um so <laughs> we're forked process this is okay this is not what we should be doing but anyway we just want to make it work first um okay this is now the magic right okay so we need to get completions and get quick info and these things are here and that's what we're going to do. We also need to do, grab some uh, measure language service args. Okay, if true. I love this, return true, whatever. <laughs> that has got to be one of the best possible comments. <laughs> like at some point this did something else. At some point it was commented out and just returned true whatever okay So we're just going to ignore that. We're also going to assume that TypeScript is imported and that we have all of, oh no. Um, interesting. Package dot package directory. No, package path is. Yeah, no. Oh, no, it's the it's the um. VS code thing for goodness sake this feels wrong um, running it in a running it in a It feels like I'm getting too far into the stick everything in one file and make it work. Uh, because we're basically now needing to recreate a lot of TypeScript stuff. So mm, do we want to do this in a forked process? It's the first question. And yes, we presumably do because TypeScript might crash. but that would require I configure rollup to create another 
X another entry, which might not work. So let's see. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, so basically, I think we need to create a worker file that we can run separately. Um, and that seems fine. Okay, so let's do that. So we have our rollup config, and we have our input. And we will also have like a worker. So source worker .ts. And our worker is going to do the actual job of all of this. So basically, it's going to do this. So, and it's probably going to need to import some stuff. So this is gone. Um, and then we're gonna have to fix this as in some types. Okay, get pass command line for package. I wonder if we open this in a in a in a child process, it probably won't have access to VS Code, but we can try. Uh, so let's see if that works. If I can just import VS Code as before, uh, and hmm. We basically have pass command line and this thing. Here's what we do. Is this used anywhere else? No, thankfully. Okay, so basically, That should now uh, we need to import TypeScript as well and VS Code and format diagnostics host. Okay. And it needs to have cool. Have a type and OS. Cool. Uh, and then log is basically we'll have our logger and hopefully now the, the first question is like will any of this work in um, in an environment in a worker environment and I'm, I'm guessing it might not so um, like we're just gonna see so let's see if this log thing works so we will log that Okay, and then we, we want to grab the, oh, do we did need the TS command grab part. Okay, so get past command line and, oops, grab log and we return it. And we now need to have, oh, we await. And now we need to grab the TS config file as well.
So we're, we're starting to do some stuff uh, in terms of extraction. And now we need to see if our, um, if our worker function is even going to be able to run. So uh, what we're just going to do to start with is say log um, message. Okay, so that, that we want to see is that going to work. Uh, and we're going to uh, export const worker path equals file name. And we're going to import that here and say that. Uh, let's see. I'm expecting this is probably going to go badly wrong, but let's see. Yeah, failed. Uh, process was not started as a fork process. Oh, because it's importing it. So actually, I think we can just ignore that and say, what did we do here? some stuff was logged probably lots of failures as well that's fine I'm not expecting it to succeed what I want to know is whether uh, whether anything worked in there so what we want to do is okay well we don't want to log all of that let's get rid of that log and then let's figure out what we're running okay where's fail being called Is on error being called. Okay, I want to see. Okay, well, first there's a question. What does our dist folder look like? So we have our worker, which is requiring this. question to start with is just we just want to do this okay so let's remove all of our more complex stuff about this and just try the basics of um, this. So we're going to fork and we're going to do worker path and we don't need any args and uh, process.cwd I guess. Uh, and I don't, yeah, we don't need any args, right? So in fact, we probably don't even need a cwd. So we just want to do that and then child dot on maybe can I listen to star and say
Okay, what are we gonna listen to? Uh, child on, um, what is it? Do we have like an error code? Uh, close. Child on uh, disconnect. Just say log. It's exiting, it seems. Uh, with process one, which means there is an, an like an error code, right? So what is our worker? Why might it be exiting? This. Let's just check. Might we be getting anything in the debug console that I'm ignoring because I'm focusing on somewhere else? No. Oh, well, that's fine. Maybe this. Uh, what is this thing we should actually be using? We should be using require main and module children. What is module children? We probably do want to use worker threads actually, um, but I think I'm just going to drop this test for now and run the risk of running this more than once. Uh, and let's try it again.
no better results. I think we can try this. Oops. It's working so well. And then I killed my server. Let's try it again. No good. Okay, still exiting. Oh, uh, maybe it's just. Uh, let's just see. Is there an error, or is it something else? Uh, let's try that. Try this one more time. Whatever it is, I want to know which event we are dealing with. Okay, we have a disconnect, exit, and close. And it disconnects with a, uh, and it probably disconnects. Why would it, why would it disconnect? Maybe because we're done. Could we send a message? So basically it says, uh, child, uh, send a message, uh, send. And what are we looking for on the other side? We're looking for anything. Okay. And that then should be logged, I guess, if it worked. Uh, let's give it a try. Okay, let's try doing something different. Uh, let's do... Well, let's see if um, it's those imports that are causing an issue, right? So let's not log. Let's not import VS Code. Let's simply console log stuff. This should be super simple. Uh, and it's also probably spawning so many different. Oh, interesting. Nothing is happening. Because I guess it's um, the worker is probably logging stuff on its by itself. Okay, so it's probably just happily running in the, the background. So what we want to do is something like log message, and then we're going to send another one. So process send, uh, and we're going to do like uh, oh what send message. Send uh, hey there, and we'll do uh, that. Uh, and we're going to log the message, and then we are going to disconnect. And um, because we're done, so we're saying child disconnect. Great. Try it one more time.
message great so okay it's working fine the, the the thing is working fine but i guess it's not working fine if we import vs code into the worker so everything that needs vs code has presumably got to be passed to it that's fine we can do it okay so the thing that we need to run in this worker is uh we need to import typescript and get some stuff so this all needs to be passed to the worker to begin with so um i think yeah, I think that's fair. So instead, run with listening child processes needs to pass this in. So when we fork the uh, when we f um, fork this, we're then going to need to say um, child dot send and send this st stuff uh, to it. Or well, presumably we do send something. Let's see, child send. Aha. Current input current input. Okay, so we're going to grab all of this from um, So what do we need? So we need We're going to import TS, that should be fine. Okay, uh, and then that can go. We're going to need the command line. That should be from the message. So um, okay. So we can ignore that. We're going to need to create the language service host, which is going to be coming from here somehow. Sorry, I'm making it wider again. Uh, about this index.ts file. Super. Okay, what are we going to do with it? So we have got the data and then, okay. Okay, we also have the batch compilation result. What is that? Um, that's basically pulling out What does this do? Okay, this is total diagnostics, I think. Like the memory usage of the entire TypeScript project. So that's not individual. And I think we probably want individual data. Um, Okay, so I think we, we ought to basically take what we've got now and actually just do something with it to start with. What we want to do is display it somehow. And this, obviously there's a lot to clean up here, but I think we, we want to see if we can translate this into data that's displayed within a file. Uh, so we've got the, and also this is not like, this is not a one-off thing. We want to run this like when things change. Um, so, but, but to start with, we can definitely display it as a, as a single thing. Um, Okay. 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 What? It's 1962. 
Okay. I thought you all just went quiet on me. Okay. 96-2. We're here, we're here. So much fun. Thank you, by the way, for everyone who comes back and tells me. Like, I feel like you're time travelers from the future. You are in a new reality, and you're coming and catching me up on a, uh, like, on in the past, still seeing chats from a, a previous era. Hmm. Okay, so, um, what am I doing? So I am saying, um, we need to show the granular stuff. And so we have this diagnostic, right, okay. I'm catching up with myself. Um, so let's go to this thing again. So we have got this diagnostic information. We have got ranges and severity, etc. This is brilliant. This is what we want, right? So we're going to create a diagnostic um, and pass the range and update the diagnostic. Okay, so let's just move this into a separate function um, and basically say, okay, so this, all of this is the, uh, is the, the diagnostic process, right? So we, the pass command line, I think is, no, we should probably should do all of it. Okay, so this is basically what we're gonna run. So we're gonna have a little function. So async function run diagnostics or something. And it's this that we're going to do. Uh, and then we're going to need to update the diagnostics. Okay, so, and, and we're going to run this on startup, but maybe we're also gonna run this like on, on change. So uh, we would want to, I'm just gonna install perfect debounce. And we're going to run this, oh, there's so much content in here. Right, cleaning this up is going to be a fun thing. Okay, so we are going to run just that. So uh, let's see, const update, um, run is going to be debounce run diagnostics, uh, like 500. Uh, and we're going to import debounce. Okay. Uh, and then we're just going to run like that. And uh, we are going to, in our run diagnostics, we're going to like, create some stuff. So we have got this. Um, Oh, we have a text document. Excellent, this is good. So actually we do want to, to respect that. So we have to start with our document. It's gonna be a VS Code text document. Excellent. And we are going to do run event document. Cool. Um, so in our uh, diagnostics, we've got this document we're going to now want to, ooh, do we need to create a new collection? I guess so. Um, huh. Okay, so we have a, uh, in, our, in our main function at the top, we are going to, do this. And it looks like we should also register this subscription. So context subscriptions push that. Uh, and so we're going to create a, a collection and this collection is going to be called um, types TS perf. And we are going to, what is diag? Um, Okay, it's going to be hmm. anyway. Ooh, yeah, we're gonna get rid of that. Okay, so we have a, a collection and we're going to pass in the document and the collection 
And this should be a diagnostic collection. Cool. So we're going to grab that in here. And we are going to basically at the end uh, update it. So we're going to be able to do this thing. But we're going to iterate probably over the results. So our results are it's our matrix because we're adding the measurement. Measurement is oh, the measurement is basically adding benchmarks, which are from the file map. Uh, okay. And we're wanting to do stuff with it at the end. Uh, and I'm, I think now is probably the time when I actually need to pull in some of these types. <laughs> Let's see. So we have uh, create language service test matrix and it's mm, got some language service benchmarks. I just want to stick in here. So we need that. We need measure language service. What else? Uh, TS past command line. We need um, language service single measurement. We need interesting. this thing. Cool. We need these as well, socket. It's coming from node. We need language service. That's probably just TS, right? Oh, these are also not used anymore in this file. They're used in the worker, I guess, uh, which will be those and also these and also these and but the more important that this file is is because this is our active development phase and then we're going to grab this one and it's that and this and okay so we've got our types it's a self-contained file uh, what's going on in a moment I feel like I'm gonna need another cup of tea and possibly doing a um, something to get my blood flowing again. Okay. Um, no, I need another cup of tea. And we're totally, we're like, I feel we're, 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 that, we're like, we just need to display this stuff, right? So, cup of tea, five minutes and I'll be back.
Okay, I am back with a cup of tea in hand. Ah, right, let's go. So I want to display some, ooh. Oh, I see. Now that we have some types, it's complaining because we don't have, oh, excellent. Right, Cass, that's amazing that actually we are still together, right? It feels like the command line should be TS command line. Test command line. Okay. Beautiful, okay, it's working. Um, no, I'm back, I am back, I have, Got my cup of tea and I have done a few push ups as well. Right. This code, I think, will largely have to be refactored. Like, just to be super clear, this is in the interest of getting something working uh, and proving like a proof of concept. Okay, so what we want to do is. Okay, well, first, let's check if this still works. Uh, but we still get some logs. And that's ignore these this diagnostic stuff for now. So let's reload. And I wanted to do some stuff. Cool. Okay, clear the output. No, it's still going. Is this basically being constantly triggered? Maybe. Because we've stuck it in, did change. So, anyway. Uh, okay, what we're gonna want to do is create some diagnostics. So the, the data that we're getting back is this kind of thing. Like this is the diagnostic, I guess. Um, so we have, yeah, the file name. And we actually only care about stuff in our current file, like the one that the, the user is in, I guess. Oh no, I guess we could we could display data for any any file, right? It doesn't just have to be that one. Okay. So we could display it in any file. And we want to know the duration. And we want to know when there's a super complex type. Does anyone have a good example of, uh, Johannes, thank you. I'll see you. Rikas and uh, Johannes, you, you two are the, the, okay. So, I want to know, well, we just, uh, like, just start with, let's just, let's just display the data. Um, like, we still have to ask the question, like, is this good data? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Uh, and we, so we want to iterate over it somehow. So we have our matrix. Uh, we have a, hmm. We probably can ignore this entirely. I don't, I'm not really noticing anything. And So can we iterate over it? So basically uh, the add measurement is, okay, what are we returning? So we have matrix dot get all benchmarks. That's what we want. So uh, const benchmarks, great. What else would we have? Add measurement and inputs. Okay, so for const bench, mark of benchmarks, benchmark, what do we have? We've got, oh wait, get all benchmarks is any. <laughs> okay. Okay, so basically it's a map of number to 
language service benchmarks. And it's basically just going to be the values of them. So therefore, it's just going to be language service benchmark. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to be um, language service benchmarks, right. So that should, in fact, be that. Uh, so we now have benchmark dot this. So we are going to create some diagnostics. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, const diagnostics. And these are going to be uh, VS code dot diagnostic. And we're going to say, um, I'm going to create, create the stuff. So, and then at the end, we're going to push our diagnostics. And actually, we're going to need to do this, I guess, for multiple URIs, right? So, yeah. So basically, we would, we would want to do ignore that and basically just do something like uh, for const file of uh, diagnostics uh, input no matrix inputs uh, collection set um, vs code workspace dot as relative path or should it be the full path like I, I'll have to see what a document URI looks like um, I think that is an important thing to do so let's just again <laughs> comment that out and basically go up and have a look um, on uh, did change. Okay, so we want to. We actually we're going to skip. Uh, this is probably been running constantly while I've been gone. Uh, console log, uh, just log event document URI. Okay, Let's see what format it is. So the f hmm. okay, so it's this much more complex thing than I thought it would be. So the URI is yeah, it's got some stuff. So we we basically need to figure out how to convert to a URI, which I guarantee you there's a um, a helper for it, right? So. VS code uh, convert file path to URI. Or maybe, maybe, maybe we just have to, no, no, no. We probably have to do it the other way around. Uh, okay, we, we've got it, but um, we probably need to find the open windows. Oh, VS URI file. Okay, that works too. Okay, so basically, um, we should be able to do that here. So, uh, const URI is VS Code. Oh, thank you. Now it helps, right? Okay, so now we have the, this URI, and then we have um, diagnostics filter d dot d dot source no 
I think we need to do it a little bit differently. So um, const uh, map is record string hmm, diagnostic like this. Uh, and then basically we're going to iterate over that for a uh, file of map. We're going to do a file and then we're going to uh, in map and then we're going to set the set it like this map file okay that is what we want to do uh, and then we are going therefore to iterate to like to assign the map value to the um, We're going to design the diagnostics to it, so we won't use these. Um, so we'll say basically a map a benchmark file name. Uh, we'll initialize it, and then we're going to create some diagnostics. So, uh, ben uh, so it's going to need to be a new range. Uh, we've got that data. No, got to start. I wonder if it's possible to get like a list of tokens, somehow to tokenize the text editor. Let's see what I've got. So in this event, uh, I should have access to event dot document dot I want to tokenize it. Do people know what I'm like? I want you know why I would want to to tokenize it, right? Um, So I don't want to just arbitrarily log. I guess I probably don't have any of these. I don't want to arbitrarily log uh, everything. Um, okay, we need a collection anyway. Mm. And do we need the document at all? So I think probably, let's think about this. We have a document, are we using it? No, because we're just gonna create new URIs for each one, so. Like that. And then we're just going to use that like this. So we are we can drop the the document and just pass the collection. So we have our run diagnostics and we can oops we can basically just run with the collection. Okay, I want to see the, the updates again. So It's gonna put some random data in, I guess. Let's try it. Let's 
So let me just think. So 13 is okay. So that basically gives me that to the end of the line. Uh, what about if I have the whole thing, uh, 13, 29, and 21? So basically, Twenty one and twenty nine. Oh no, sorry. Const uh, um, that code, that code uh, slice twenty one. Okay, and twenty nine. Interesting. Okay, so these are all sort of relevant pieces. Uh, and thirteen we already checked. So these are all, yeah, these are all relevant. Um, okay, now what do we do? We probably probably average them, I would guess. In the, the um, we have get all benchmarks. Get all benchmarks. So, um, what the, what the, okay. So we have a test matrix. We run the child processes. Then batch then mark all the benchmarks, then package it all up. Now these unique positions. Oh, okay, so we have identifiers this way. And the identifiers, uh, we are, oh, this is useful. because we're only setting the start and the benchmark, but actually we have the end of the token. Okay, this is really good. So we basically have uh, identifier, uh, let's just set it. So we basically want our benchmark, oh no, we should have it, end. Start, end, line, offset. Okay, so maybe we just, we're not logging everything, maybe. We're adding a measurement, but our benchmark is in our position map, and the position map is in the file map. So we should maybe have access to it. So we have, okay, benchmark, and we have got, yeah, okay, line, offset, start, end. This is wonderful. Okay, so much better. Right. So we're going to have, um, this is the line, presumably. So benchmark dot uh, line. Uh, and benchmark.start and benchmark.end. Cool. And um, we'll say duration, uh, is that right? Okay. And the source is going to be uh, TypeScript, uh, TSPerf. Um, I don't think we need related information. We can ultimately do some stuff for, oh, and we need to append the diagnostic, right? So basically, okay, let's try that. See if something happens. Oh, we need the URI. Why do we need the URI in there? Is it not being used? Oh, maybe we do need it. Hmm. Seems strange to me, but uh, sort of token. Let's try that. I will not lie, Omar, I am beginning to get a little bit hungry. How am I going to be able to see this? Oh, we still need to run this on. Uh... Okay, how 
how do I see the diagnostics? Okay, so it. think about this so we basically uh, so this range message severity we're going to mark this as an error because I, I want to make sure we see it and that's the message and that's the range oh but it's fine because we're marking it as associated to the particular file so we don't have to do the URI twice that's good And we'll basically say, do we do it at some point collection? Okay, uh, log updated benchmarks. And we're going to stop logging the uh, the measurement. feels good. Okay, so it's regularly updating the benchmarks, as I would expect, but it's not showing them to me. So that might be because I have a, oh, look at that, it's showing them to me, but they're not being displayed because, um, let's see, error lens, probably because I, Aha, they're not being displayed because obviously we um, are not accurately giving it the right URI, I guess. So so let's just see why that might be. So we have a uh, the URI down here. So let's log it. We'll basically say log URI uh, and let's uh, we'll say this is um, URI from uh, diagnostics. Um, let's do it like this. Uh, and then we also should have uh, in the run command, we should also say log event document URI uh, and say like URI from workspace. So these. I want to match, obviously they don't match. So let's see why they don't match. Why is that not running? <laughs> so let's try that again. Oh, is it just I haven't edited it? Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have the URI from workspace. We have, the, uh, okay, I'm gonna copy all of that. So I, I wanna compare URI from workspace with, from diagnostic, diagnostic. Okay, I don't need any more URIs from workspace. I've got it. So it's this. <laughs> so basically, that's the URI from workspace. Okay, let's stop doing that. Now let's do the, do the run diagnostics, and this should log a URI down here, uh, and that should do something here. Let's just try that like that. Uh, okay, let's try that one more time. Okay. 
Okay, totally different. Um, and basically, I guess this is passing, this already has a relative path, that's why. So the benchmark path is relative to the, um, to the TS path that we have, I guess. So this test paths, maybe? So um, that is benchmark dot, oops. And then we just want to use this instead. Okay. Uh, and that should be, um, for now. Let's see if that does anything for us. Yes, it does. Okay, we have little lint things popping up in the Yes, um, everyone, uh, Dukan, um, I would really, really like to see, because like we need to know what the thresholds are. Like, uh, this is a good, this is a bad metric, because we're getting some metrics, that's great. But we actually need to be able to say, like, this is, this is bad, this is good, right? So this is, these are some metrics, but that's, you know, what is that? Um, so, and also, is this accurate? I bet the start and end is um, inaccurate. We probably need to subtract offset from it somehow. So if we have, let's see, line and character, okay, exactly. So we have line and then the offset is, yeah, we subtract the offset, I would guess. So, Try that, and uh, let's reload. Why is this not showing anything now? So what is our offset? Let's just, we have to log our, our benchmark, right? Also, we might well be able to um, narrow this down so it only displays data for the file that's open, um, which I think might be a, because if you're thinking about running this on a huge repo, like at the moment, it's doing, it's doing a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's grab uh, this. Okay, so we've got our offset, the start and the end. Okay, no wonder that's not gonna work. Okay, what is this? So uh, in fact, this is going to be, um, Okay, and not the offset. Okay, 
ordered pat. This is weird. Okay, ordered pair. Uh huh. And that's presumably why. New range. Start end. All oh, right. I think it may be possible. that we just ignore the line. Let's try that. So let's try this instead. And we just drop these. Okay, I think we can actually much in a much simpler way just say we're passing that data in. Oh, maybe not. Does position allow me? No, it also requires. Rikas, oh yeah, it's the way to go, right? That's the way to go. What is offset? I don't think I should be subtracting this. I should somehow be I want to get a position from a character. One thing is for sure we're not we shouldn't be subtracting the this offset. Um, that's that's definitely the case. Uh, Maybe it's just as simple as say is as making it subtracting one from each of them. This might be because they do seem to be um, well. Let's see. No, I think they are. Uh, like 29, that's right. Well, let's see what happens.
Yeah, it's not not right, is it? Because this that those three characters should be on log. Actually, they should be on Bob, I think. And then this should be Let's add some more details to the um, to the message, right? So we're going to say um, benchmark dot um, hmm. identifier text. That seems good. Math dot sum math dot what do I have access to? Math dot Guess not. Uh, benchmark dot quick info durations dot reduce. Um, yes. So now it should show me, yeah, that's meant to be the line before. Maybe it's that set. Maybe that is it. Maybe it's just the, the line is a, should that be zero indexed? So if I have a, a position, is that zero based? Ah, that's why. Okay. So the line should be minus one and then the, the start and end I suspect are not. Let's give that a go. And that's why it's sitting at the beginning there because it couldn't go any further but probably it would have hovered over log. Yes! Yes? No. So that should be, um, oh, it looks like there are two of them. So Bob is rightly hovering over Bob. By the way, can I not just say like is this not cool, right? It's not actually like hovering over a thing and telling it you like the, the length of time it takes for TypeScript to resolve that. Mm. And so now what we need to do is hover, like just correct this, which is basically the obviously things on subsequent lines aren't quite right. This should be a simple thing, but it's clearly not. So how, I guess this is the info, this is where we should change it in the, in the actual code that generates it. So ideally we want to be able to pass that line and then the start and the end. And the start needs to be in relation to the, um, to the line, whereas at the moment it's in relation to the, the source file. So we want to say um, like the line in character dot character. What is line in character? get line and character of position. Let's try that. Line character. So in fact, we want the zero based. Are you, maybe we should be subtracting the, the offset. So that right? Um, uh, we had like start and end. Okay, so that's not right because the offset here 
13 was 13. That was it. I think what we want is maybe something like this. So offset should be, um, so that line and character is great. It tells us the line. We want the line and character of the beginning of the line. So that's our line offset. So that start and end can be related to the line itself. So we would like to do something Okay, so character is actually the length. That's probably how far in the line it is. So what we want to do is I feel like I'm very close to knowing the answer to this. Okay, so basically what we want to do is const thing is get line and character of position, uh, source file, uh, and then the start minus the line and character character uh, should give me the uh, previous line. Uh, and so then this offset, so previous line is that dot, no, because that's just gonna, that's not gonna tell me. Oh no, this is going to tell me. That's going to give me. Oh, multiply it by the line. So, but only apply it if it's the, uh, if it's, Offset is <laughs> so sorry. Offset is um, the the number of characters in the given line, which is totally useless. Start is the no offset is what we want to pass instead of start. That's it. So start should be something like this. And then end should be dot get end um, minus line and character character. There we go. No. Something like that. Let's just do a sanity check. So basically what I want to be saying is um, 13 is the, is the start. Um, and then the end is 16 minus 13 minus 13, which is 16. So it is, in that case, correct. Okay, let's just see what happens if I reload the window. I've got my random maths correct. So it might be totally, totally wrong, right? Like, there's, there's no guarantees here. Okay. Console, correct. 
Bob, not correct. So Bob should be set to um, Oh, are we still doing anything with offset? Probably. So we're just going to ignore that. These are now correct. Yes, it's all correct. Okay, so we've got console, we've got log, and we've got Bob. And basically, we are able to say how long it takes. Uh, and obviously, Oh, that's long. That's long. Oh, I'm just I'm adding them. I'm not averaging them. I should average them. Um, so reduce um, divided by <laughs> benchmark quick length. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we'll take it to fixed. Or I guess just, we could just round it. Okay. And then we basically need like a little map to say like, this is normal range, this is too much, this is too little. Um, cool. So we have the information how long it's taking. Excellent. Now if I were to write some new stuff, if I do something like uh, type thing is uh, key string string, am I going to get any data from that? I am. So how long it's taking. So basically 200 milliseconds seems to be like a normal, normal range. Uh, I guess in our project and actually this might be a um, like there might be a, a sort of median value uh, and so what we want to do is find out the ones which take too long in comparison to the others rather than um, I don't know I think there's some opportunity to, to improve this um, what would we do how are people feeling about this by the way are you as stoked as I am? Um, let's find cowl.com. There we go. Let's clone this and see. It's taking its time as well. Oh, I can actually just do a fetch depth. Oh. Oh, I see.
I could also run Nuxt. Like, I could run this on Nuxt. That would be a definitely a way to... And I'm more familiar with Nuxt. So let's just do that. Okay, we're going to clone Nuxt, Nuxt. I could actually just copy it, right? Um, code Nuxt, Nuxt. There's a whole thing, um, basically, which would be optimizing this. So I think probably we want like a worker pool rather than child processes. Um, and then the pool basically is just around and could be fired off at different um, files. We probably also want to limit it to the open files in the editor um, because this is for giving you data, not doing a comprehensive lint of your whole project. So like we don't want to be compiling the whole project over and over again, just the active file that you're looking at, which will pull in the others as well. But um, and so we could probably see about that uh, in a second. Okay, so if I open, oh, it uh, this won't work, will it? Because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that might not work about that, but uh, let's give it a go. Uh, we're gonna open instead uh, debug uh, launch. We need to launch this with um, Playground Nuxt. Right. Excellent. Okay, so now we're going to uh, install the dependencies and run the dev prepare, which I guess is already done, but, and now we're really going to see Oh, this probably won't work because it's not TypeScript. Let's try this. That's another Nuxt. That's um, this one. Okay, so the whole thing is taking much longer, and I think that's because the. Um, yeah. I think it's because it's it has some amount of the the information here, which is from the. Um, the entire workspace compilation. So like there's, there seems to be like a minimal a minimum amount of time that's being taken. Uh, let's also see what other data is there coming in. Quick info and completions. They're both Okay, let's first try the, the, the concept with this particular uh, project. Um, I think it's all the more important that we're just running against the, um, the specific uh, file that is open. So we, we want to basically run the diagnostics only for those. Uh, and so we would do something like uh, const um, open files uh, is File name is what? Cool. And basically, we would want to um, restrict it. So filter m m dot file name is um, 
sum o dot o equals join and the prime dot name uh, const root duh is that I'm going to use that instead and we'd basically be this Let's see if that works. It might be that this is excluded, actually. Let's just have a look at this. We exclude playground. Okay, so it's just, it's not gonna run. It's not in the TypeScript thing. Whereas this one is, and the moment I type enter, it should now run uh, the diagnostics on this file, hopefully, or not. Either running or it's taking a very, very long time. So let's have a, a quick filter. So we'll do um, log uh, matrix inputs map m dot m dot file name. Um, this. And let's also log the open files. Okay. See if that gives us any more data. Interesting. Dot git. That's a little weird. Oh no. Maybe it's just not. They should be the um, inputs and then the open files, right? Well, this is obviously an open file, as is this. And weirdly that, but I think this is, this is also more accurate. Feels like I'm just missing something here. Somehow. And maybe this this is the problem somehow. Let's just drop that. And reload again. I 
about strange. Let's just try that. Okay, that's more like it. So that was actually, those are the open files, that's fine. And, but I want to see what the, uh, the inputs are for the matrix. So And we probably also want to avoid reinstantiating the TypeScript program every time. This is painful, um, and it's like there's a lot of stuff going on. But I think I think we probably want to do. This means we should have, hopefully, a single I'm guessing it's not somehow logging this because a lot of files oh I guess we're not clearing them <laughs> they're just constantly being being restarted 
Uh, okay, so what else do we need? We have that. We need this as well. Ooh. Oh, we're not actually using that. That was a legacy file. Uh, let's rerun our linting. Remove a lot of this code. back to some of this stuff. So we shouldn't need to pass the uh, ps to that. Um, We also want to share the message type here. Sorry, getting lost in my myself here. Uh, okay, we have a message. Sorry, half of these things don't need to be, sorry, what am I talking about? This can just be directly in the thing, and so can these. That makes it nicer. And then we have the, the process, the, like the message handling down here. And the message should be command line. A lot of these things we can get rid of as we are doing. We can try these, maybe, instead of the. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why this isn't working. It doesn't seem to be working at all. So it's. I bet we just have to restart it. Okay, that must be it. 
reload window. Because I, I previously filtered it and I bet it's still filtered somehow, not running. I might also try this on a slightly smaller repo. Um, so I avoid So let's kill that, remove the playground, next. And I might also be failing if it is somehow Might be that this is the issue. Let's try not logging that and seeing if if the if it starts working again. Oops, we don't have next anymore, so we need to change our launch to just be the playground and close that that and launch. Whoops. it's working again it just is taking a while to run this run the that benchmark um, and even longer with the like the full repository and I think that's probably because of what we're doing so the the concept is it's running a command for every possible location in the file so what we want to do uh, so if you are the open files um, I think what we want to do is basically filter them to just be uh, TypeScript files that are open. So uh, we would say open files is um, this visible text editors. Okay. So Again. Everyone's still there? People still on 9062, I think. Okay, 
so we have test paths, we have open files, great. And so it's the same and we can just filter it. So we'd basically say that and we'd say uh, filter um, path dot open files includes path. Cool, seems to be a good idea. And then let's hope that still works. Thanks, Zaf. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's create another file. Okay, we have just Bob uh, because it's not visible. Okay, that's good. Excellent. And we also want to, uh, let, let's just see what happens if I create, oops, if I create like a view file or something like that. Nothing, so super. So it's only going to be for doing this for TypeScript paths um, and probably we could have some handling. So if you close the file, it clears the errors or something like that. Um, now the, yeah, this is very dependent on my system, right? So it's 430, it was 200 before. Uh, like it's it's not, like it's, this isn't an absolute number. This isn't, isn't um, talking about TypeScript complexity. It's just measuring the time it, it actually took, um, which I think is probably the, the right thing to do. Like it, it um, it's about relative performance. But I mean, hey, I would welcome anyone here who's listening who, who thinks about this. Is this like what 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 are you going to appreciate? Is it the timing, or is it something else? I think I I think it's probably the timing. But but if not, tell. Oh, hello, that's me. Uh, but if not, uh, tell me. Right. Um, so let's just see if we can display this in any other way. So basically we would want to do, um, basically we want to check to see how we would do this. Okay, so the filtering seems like a good idea to, to start with. Where are we using this? That. Well, those are useful. That's a useful log for the moment. So, right, so basically we need to, to come up with the, the severity. So basically something like um, const baseline is, uh, we want the baseline for the entire project. So is something like, oh right. <laughs> I've just refactored it out, but we probably want it. So um, const benchmarks equals get all benchmarks. Then we're going to stick up there, but we're also going to use this to come up with a baseline for us to decide how, uh, is, okay, so benchmarks, uh, and we're going to basically say uh, values, which should be an iterator, okay, dot, uh, values. So these are these are like um, okay. So that is basically Wait a second, 
what is B? B is a benchmark, which is, oh no, that is right. Okay, because this has already been flat mapped. Okay, right, so th those those are the, the, the benchmarks. And um, so now this is a, a, an array of benchmarks and then we're going to reduce it uh, to an average. Uh, and basically, I think we probably want to maybe make it a percentage over that or something like that. So what we would do is something like, um, okay, const proportional, uh, proportional time. Uh, going to grab the duration here. So const duration. Uh, okay, those are just quick info durations. We also have another kind of, of information which we might consider uh, pulling in. Uh, and we'll basically say it's like duration divided by proportional time. Proportional time. Oh no. Du duration divided by baseline. Uh, and basically say if that is greater than one, then we're going to um, show it as an error. Uh, and also we're going to normalize this. So um, something like, okay, proportional greater than one or VS code, there we go. That's the kind of thing that we want. And then, but I think also uh, it should be, Maybe 1.5, uh, and then we'd say like over one, like over twice. It can be an error, maybe. Over 1.5, it will be a warning. Okay, let's see that. And then we want to normalize the, um, the duration to be, we're going to change that formatting, but I want to get a feel for what it looks like as a whole. Oh, I need to run this thing when VS Code instantiates, right? Oh, look at that beautiful information that's flowing in, right? So um, what is it telling me? Minus 80%. Why is it all minus 80%? Okay, so we have a proportional time. Okay, information. Uh, okay, let's let's normalize this. So, const uh, display uh, percentage equals this. So 
So proportional time times 100. Probably doing something wrong here. So, right, tell me. Uh, proportional time times 100. And then uh, basically this should then be, uh, if this is above, this feels so hacky, but this is also not quite right. So I think we'll drop both of those because I don't think they're needed anymore. Um, and I think we can just include the, the time, right? So now that's just going to tell us the percentage of time. Um, the question though, oh, ha, ah, that's why. Okay, so but we basically need to do this. So So we need all of them. App uh, B B frequent durations. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to measure all of those like that. That's a more accurate thing, isn't it? So let's reload the window and see. Oops, and I keep on forgetting. I want to run run immediately. Oh, yeah, well, it won't do anything if there's no open window, right? So let's edit, and then we've got some data. Okay. So um, our complexity is, uh, is we really don't care about a lot of this stuff. Uh, so we probably actually don't want to show the, the like, what do we care about minus 1%, 1%? Like, I think we need a threshold to show information. So we probably want to, um, uh, do we need decorations? I think we probably don't need decorations. We probably also don't need, for the moment, a web view. Um, but we might want to handle the TypeScript version from the project at some point. Um, okay. Oops, I've disappeared again. Mm. Oh, and we also need to obviously to credit definitely typed. Yeah, not sure why they got rid of it. Um, oh, I probably want to use this instead. Actually, I wonder if they just moved it into another repo. Let's just have a look and see whether we can. Nope, it doesn't seem to have been published since then. And it was still in that repo. Not designed for public consumption. Sorry about that, people. Um,
Okay, um, we're gonna to have to refactor that a little bit further. In fact, I think a lot of these things can just be moved out because none of this is, we don't need TS path anymore. And I think some of this we can remove further. Okay, this is a bit different. Hmm, and we're not doing anything with Don, are we? So it's another thing that can go. Cool. I think we can also use get port free instead of a lot of this code. don't need the web view, so we're going to get rid of that. We don't need, therefore, the UI, so we're going to get rid of that. We don't need uh, that, therefore, in our workspace, so we can get rid of that. Uh, there's no examples, we can get rid of them. So we can reinstall the dependencies. Uh, we can, are we importing web view in index? Not anymore. And cool. Super. Oops. I am happy that things are going well. So, um, right, we probably need to um, right check what's happening in the. Uh, let's. Uh, oops. Let's launch the debugger again. Uh, and I need to make sure that we don't. Let me remove some stuff. So we shouldn't log anything, I guess, if it's under zero. It's not not relevant. Or is it? Like, what are our other options? So we've basically got uh, um, diagnostic. We've got our uh, like information or warnings. This is information. Uh, there's hint. We've got hint, information, and warning. Let's just see what hint looks like. Uh, 
Okay, cool. Okay. So that's basically just um, Right. I don't think we want hint. I think we want information. Um, and I think we only want, uh, let's see. So if comparison percentage is greater than 1.5, then we're going to do all of this stuff. Uh, so, and we only need to construct the range in this case. Uh, so I think this is fine. And basically what we're going to, we know it's over 1.5, so we are going to display it as information. Uh, and so we can basically just say this, which means that everything should be fine in our in our project, that in our playground project. Okay. Oh, what does the code means? Okay, that's irrelevant really. This is a random code. Okay. We log for um, one point five percent. Okay, and what we want to basically do is say, well, I guess it could be warning. Let's just see what warning looks like. Uh, I guess it will just be yellow. So we can say, um, I guess, yeah, warning. Uh, and we want to format that a bit better. So at the moment, it just is like plus 4%. Um, it would be more like 150% or something. So it would be, uh, let's see. Um, This is also irrelevant because it's always going to be under, but still, um, const uh, log level. Cool, looking a little bit clearer. Um, we don't actually need the range at this point. So it's feeling better. I think there's an opportunity to do a lot of a lot more stuff here. Actually, I'll keep the separate line of the thing. I think command line args we're never using. So let's drop them. What else are we using in crash recovery? I think that we could probably drop as well. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing myself slightly. Uh, we want to have yeah, the information this is fine. Uh, I'm going to reload the window. I, I need a really complex type. So um, let's take it. Uh, really complex. Uh, nobody seems to want to. some random code. Hmm. 
Okay, it's all okay. It's loaded up, uh, and I think we need to. Oh right, we were going to update how it was displayed. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> this is uh, this should be one hundred and fifty, right? <clears throat> because we're if we're looking at the comparison percentage and not the, we should be looking at the proportional time, I guess. Let's try that again. try and make a terrible type uh, type um, thing t extends a string um, equals t uh, extends infer a A or string Oops. thing. Okay, now might be the time to try it with cal.com, I guess. Uh, so let's clone it. And we want to exclude the root, our root yes config here. Oh no. Our root yes config here from examples and also git ignore can ignore our examples before I ruin the thing. Okay, so uh, now let's open it. This might still be bad, but let's see. Examples, and it should be cal.com.
we need to install some dependencies. And three hours later. Okay, what do we do to start cal.com? Uh, we can check that. We want to run. Clone. Yarn. Copy that. Do I need to do this for type complexity though? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we probably do it for do need it for the Prisma. Um, no, that would be committed to the repo, so that probably we don't need to do that. So basically, the question is just when this is done. Prettier, what's going on? Let's just get rid of Prettier anyway. Come on. Oh, I could just try uh, like a new Nux project also. Or I know um, a, a library that probably does have some type issues, which is a bit smaller than this one. Failed. Okay, let's open something. Some type file. Apps. Web. Oh, no, it should. This is pretty, oh, which is complaining. For goodness sake. Oh, no. No, no, that it is. Okay, let's reload the thing. And also, why is this? I should at least get some logs. We should have a log at the beginning, right? The open files should run. So it shouldn't be, like this shouldn't be the, the time it takes to run the benchmark. This should just be, this is just the startup of something uh, I want. OK, 
Okay, I should have, actually I should check, does it in fact, I don't see my extension in there. Let's try restarting it again and look at the extension host. Oh, uh, oh, it's because it doesn't have a TS config. And uh, what it has is a TS config in each package. So if I were to copy that and paste it here, then I bet it would start. Might not work, mind you, because that TS config is not okay so let's rethink this what we want is um as we, we don't that's not how we want to restrict uh, the app based on the presence of a typescript config so i think we, we always want it to uh to run um and so what we want to do is like make sure that we're not just resolving the typescript config from the root directory. Uh, so we have our get ts config file and this actually needs to pass like uh, in relation to a um, like the closest ts config. Ooh. <sighs> we basically want to find find closest TS config file to uh, the current file. Because we're only, we're only doing like specific current files. Um, well, this should be fine, right? Uh, this, actually, this should should be fine. This will just find, it's, it's not, sorry, this isn't correct. We still need to find the closest TS config file that, that actually covers it. Um, but I think that should be the closest one. Um, and therefore this get ts config file thing is not quite reliable because the past command line actually needs to be like to source file. So you'd want to do like um, source, so path a string, and we're just gonna pass it on. And uh, we are going to include glob pattern. And we definitely want to exclude node modules for goodness sake. And um, we want to we're just looking for one. So uh, what we want is Find files. Sorry.
Oh, it's not running at all because we still have build Nuxt in our um, in our tasks list. So we don't need to do that anymore. Okay, that should be a lot faster. Right. Complexity opened, I think. Super good. Okay, now we want to try this TRPC. But yes, we'll look at our output. Oh, it has to be edited. We probably want it to do it when it's open as well. Hmm. Okay, so nothing is showing up because I think of the TypeScript um, config. So we basically want to grab the TypeScript config file uh, and filter it this way. So we want to basically say um, files and basically do files sort, um, we want the longest file. Uh, and then we want to uh, find the longest file that has a shared prefix with the uh, the file the path that we are looking at. So um, this is not the right thing to do. I think we should use you should use um, we should use something else. Okay, so basically. Okay, no, 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 we should, we should. Okay, so const uh, ts config file is files dot uh, segments equals path split um, is so for const segment of path segments, we can basically iterate up like ascend the directory. Um, and so const path equals, no, I think we'll use a for loop, right? Um, const um, let i uh, equals zero. Yes. So, um, no, path second, I think. And basically, i is. Uh, and oops, and basically, what we would want to do I 
think that's basically it. Let's try that. And we want to log this. Oh, and we also need to pass the path. So we have a uh, get ts config file, and we're basically going to want to do um, path um, and pass it in. Oops. And run diagnostics therefore needs to be running against the event dot file name dot fs oh uh and And basically now the uh, run diagnostics need to take the file a file path that has the other way around. Okay. Um, cool. Which should mean that in diagnostics we can log the file path and everything should flow down, right? Because we're only running it on individual files. Like open ones, visible ones rather. Cool, stuff's in and we're finding the right we're finding it. So basically, we are, we have got our ts config file, which is pulling up the this packet, the right one for this package. Unless React is its own thing. No, excellent. So it's pulling it in. Is it running anything? Grummed. Uh, yes, yes, and not just for every open file. More than that. Um, and so yes, there is a huge opportunity to 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 improve this. Um, <laughs> I'm very aware of that. Uh, but what I want is a, like a proof of concept uh, because I've got a limited amount of time today. I want something that's actually going to show us some data, uh, but that is probably why it's taken quite a long time. Um, let's see, it is running against it. Okay, we ha are getting the data back. Oh, but I guess there's no issue. Like, so we were getting data but there's no, um, like everything is taking the same. Um, there seems to be nothing. There don't seem to be any issues with it. Let, let's just update our diagnostic uh, proportion thing where we just display everything <laughs> because otherwise it's very, very difficult to tell if it's working. Unfortunately, I don't think we can reuse it, um, but that would be amazing if we could. If anyone knows how to do that, let me know because that would be, be great. Um, this is going to generate so much stuff, so much stuff. We also have a range of workers and also we're, we're running each one three times. So we probably could reduce by, um, so at the moment we're running this, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. we're hard coding running this, how many times? Um, wait, 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 is this done? Not yet. Uh, we are, we're, we're doing stuff like, where are we, where is it? So we've got run diagnostics and we basically, oh, the test made, yeah, we're running five. 
So if we just set that to one, that immediately is going to speed it up five times. It's just not going to be as accurate. Uh, and we currently have 10 processes, each of which has their own TS config server. Um, let's just reload with that. So like, it's running, oh, there's no test paths. Why are there no test paths? I thought we were, open files, but no test paths. But this is the right, no, that's not the right TS config. Okay, so we've got a problem. Okay, so we basically, or maybe maybe it will work fine if I just type something in here. Because it's found the wrong TS config file. Uh, how have we sorted them? That's a good question. Have we sorted them them by? Shortest. Um, yes, we have. Okay, other way around. Interesting, because that is the correct file. No, it's not. Whoa, it's definitely not. So we definitely don't want anything with node modules in it. I thought that was excluding node modules. That's weird. Um, that shouldn't be needed, but anyway. So we should reload that. Still not working. Okay, so we're still pulling node modules in as our path. Okay, where are we loading this TS config file? Here. So we have a file path, and basically. would be a pretty essential little line of code to include. Still not working. Okay, so we have a, a path at this point, which is still includes node modules. Why? So we're filtering it so it doesn't include node modules. Explicitly, that's what we're doing. Oh, no. for goodness sake. Uh, 
think it does return. No, it just returns a ref. No, the reference to the same old array. So okay. Uh, this is very weird. Uh, what's the matter with my algorithm? So So we've got, here are all of our TS config paths. That's fair. And what is the open file that we're looking at? So it should be, uh -huh. oh, I see. So we need to do this based on the, um, let's see. We need to find the path here, and this needs to be a path in the in the um, in the project. We shouldn't be doing anything with it if it's not actually in the project. So the um, what we're doing at the problem at the moment is we're running di diagnostics on any file, uh, but we actually only want to run that. We aren't want us to, to um, uh, early return. So if File path, uh, if file path okay. That's file path equals uh, file dot path. Uh, and and this is the debounce is is also wrong on this because it's uh, because it's basically not processing it because it's it's invalidly processing an another non-TS file. So actually we probably want to, let's ignore that. We want to filter before we call run. Uh, file path is strong. Okay, pull that out, go back up to run diagnostics and basically pull it in here and say, um, if event dot, dot uh, file file name Seems like a good test, just naively. Um, and we'll use this thing here. Too sorted, yes. I don't know what kind of, um, what we know about the node that ships with VS Code, but I'm not 100% sure that it's node 20. I think it's quite legacy. I think um, we had some kind of issue that came out of that for another um, interesting.
think we're going to have to wrap up very soon, which is a total pain. Uh, okay, so there we go. That's that's a file, right? Uh, Git. Okay, now it's running. Now we're running all the stuff, and we have a path, and we're running presumably the tests. Oh, these are all of the TS configs. Okay, so that's not actually the, the one we resolved. It's uh, it's a different one. Yeah, you are not wrong. You are not wrong at all. Okay, so we've got the data just coming in to here, but we're not showing it. Why is it not being shown? Oh, it's not being shown because it's, um, it'll be in here, but it's not being shown because it's, uh, it's relative. So it's not, it's, uh, it should, it's, it's joining it twice like that. So it needs to be, our root directory should be, Wait a second. The file name should just be should just be the full test path, right? We don't need to make it relative. So then then we just have it as the absolute path. Um, and Then we don't need to join. We don't need to use the root directory. Okay, let's try that. how long it's taking um, but what are we going to do to make this better I think we need to handle I think we basically need to handle we need to move this to um, like worker threads and basically persist a TypeScript server between them um, to basically prevent this kind of yeah so it's 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 created this oh yeah Hey, okay, so everything is showing up here as um, like you're having an amount of time over the the default um, that it's taking. Um, so seven percent minus four minus thirteen. So those are light. Uh, nine percent, nine percent. This is, seems fine as a file. Um, if I open a different one, let's try. Another TRPC file, like that, maybe.
data here. It's all the same, which makes sense. If I open, the problem is I, it, like it's very difficult to validate this because you, we need something that is actually really complex. Um, but without a doubt, this needs to be a lot faster. Um, okay. I'm going to need to go because I'm going to, need to spend a bit of time with my kid before uh, dinner. Um, but I will persist on this, maybe even do a little bit more streaming of a solution. And uh, if anyone wants to contribute or jump in or whatever, let me know. Uh, because that, I think it would be pretty cool. Okay. A bit of cleanup. this. Fix um, handle uh, workspaces with multiple TS configs. Amazing. Thank you everyone for joining. It's been um, so much fun. I will do this again and uh, hopefully we'll be able to publish a, an extension uh, that will make, make life a bit easier. But I will do that another time. Have a great evening everyone and uh, yeah, next time. <laughs>